I'm sorry, but your current internet package doesn't support YouTube playback. Hey you, it's me, Curtis P. It's time for some coffee. The internet is once again under attack by the US government as the FCC has announced that they will vote to put an end to net neutrality for US customers. The FCC's Ajit Pai stating, under my proposal, the federal government will stop micromanaging the internet. Instead, the FCC would simply require internet service providers to be transparent about their practices so that consumers can buy the service plan that's best for them and entrepreneurs and other small businesses can have the technical information they need to innovate. So basically what they're saying here is that they're changing the internet back from being a Title II classification to a Title I. What does that mean exactly? Well, basically it means that service providers will be able to charge users and companies for faster or different access to their internet service. A simple way to think about this is like cable TV packages here. In the future, you might have to buy internet packages for different websites you want to visit. Some packages might include like Facebook and Twitter in one tier, but to get access to YouTube, uh, maybe you have to pay them an extra $5 a month. And of course, also you're gonna want access to Snapchat, so that's a different package altogether. That's another $5 a month. Think of how annoying that would be. It would become a totally different future for the internet. Now, not only that, but companies like Verizon or AT&T would also have the ability to decide what packages are made up, and probably because we all know how corrupt they really are, push their own versions of the service. So maybe AT&T's new music streaming service is available for free, but if you want access to Apple Music or Spotify, you gotta pay $5 a month just to access it. Then of course you also have to pay Apple or Spotify to even use it. Abolishing net neutrality could have a huge, huge impact on the future and the way that we use the internet right now. Right now for everybody, the internet usage is pretty simple. You just pay to get on the network and then that's it. You can access any site on the web. But in the future, it might turn into a pay to play system. If you don't wanna pay for the YouTube or Netflix package, well, you just can't access it. There are of course other impacting factors here for not only businesses where providers could ask them to pay up to provide faster speeds to users. An example would be like if Netflix paid AT&T so that Netflix always loaded faster than YouTube, no matter the connection, the speed that the user was getting or the device they were on. Netflix was always twice as fast as YouTube. It sounds crazy, but there's really nothing stopping them from doing that. And of course, there are gonna be people out there that think net neutrality is a bad thing, but if you look at all the possible ways this can go wrong, you're gonna wanna help out and defend it. But again, of course, this is just my quick breakdown of the entire story. There will be more and more news coming out about this event in the near future leading up to the big vote. But I think this is a good question for everyone to sort of weigh in on. So what are your thoughts about net neutrality? I'd love to hear about it in the comment section down below. Hopefully we can have a civil discussion about all of this. Try to avoid the yelling, please. Keeping with the internet related talk here, Elon Musk and SpaceX are getting ready to start testing out their future internet from space. SpaceX is planning on launching the first satellite for the future space internet project in the coming months. The end goal here is to eventually use over 4,000 satellites to beam high-speed internet down to the Earth with global coverage. Now, right now, the company is still working on testing the initial technology, which of course will go into the satellites. Space hopes to launch another test satellite in the first part of 2018, with a full launch schedule expected to start in 2019, going until 2024, when the Space Mesh Network is to be completed. The new Space Mesh Internet Network is expected to be another profitable arm of the SpaceX company which will help fund future missions to Mars, but also bring fast internet to remote locations on the globe. And last for today, more information about Apple's HomePod development is beginning to leak online. According to some reports, it looks like Apple has been working on the HomePod even before Amazon released the Echo line of devices. Originally, the HomePod was started by the audio team working on the Mac as a way to provide better audio to home customers, something that would compete against the Bose line of speakers or even Harman Kardon. But after being in development for some time, the project was eventually scrapped. Then a little while later, it was brought back to life again, just in time for Amazon to release their first generation Echo device. Apple engineers quickly got their hands on the Echo to tear it down and see really what was happening on the inside, noticing that the speakers on the Echo were pretty subpar and Apple could actually make a better selling product for the future. After more time in development, of course, the device went through many different form factors from a flat panel version to one that was even three feet tall. After Apple bought Beats, there was even talks of turning the speaker into like a Beats Pro 
product available in multiple different colors, but eventually that fell apart also. Something rather interesting about the HomePod development was the fact that the Siri team was told HomePod was not a Siri speaker. It was for audio with Siri built in to help, but not a primary feature here. This of course goes against the idea that the HomePod was to go up against the Echo. Even in Apple's recent promotional material here, the company talks about the audio playback on the device and says really nothing about Siri. As of right now, the device has been pushed back until 2018 for an unknown reason. My personal thought here is that Apple's pushed it back because of Siri itself. Apple has to realize that people want a home assistant. With Google and Amazon just killing it in that market, it really only makes sense for Apple to hold the product back a little bit and actually build Siri up to be a better product. Especially considering that Eddie Q was recently removed from the Siri team and it was handed over to Craig Federici, who of course is in charge of Apple's software, including the user interface, applications, and framework on the Mac and iOS. I think this is gonna be a good move for Siri overall. Hopefully Craig can actually help make Siri a better assistant because right now, She's a joke. If you enjoyed today's show, make sure you click on that subscribe button and of course, join the notification squad so you can stay up to date on all of the latest videos I produce throughout the week. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Links to all of that are in the description down below or on my website at curtisparody.ca. Well, until tomorrow, everybody, I'm Curtis Parody. Have an amazing day.